In this Blender tutorial, I'm going to show you how to properly bake roughness maps. And if you'd like to follow along with the same blend file that I'm using, then I'll have a free download of this blend file on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. Link is in the description. Real quick though, before we continue, I wanted to thank this video's sponsor, Sketchfab. On Sketchfab, you can upload, buy, and sell 3D models and assets. My favorite feature of Sketchfab is that you can preview 3D models online in your browser. You can also purchase models and assets from Sketchfab. Sketchfab's model store. You can use the model inspector to preview the wireframe, mat cap, textures, and more before you purchase. Check out Sketchfab with the link below. Alright, so in this video I'm going to show you how to bake out roughness maps. And after this video, if you'd like to watch other texture baking tutorials, then I'll have a link in the description to my texture baking tutorial playlist. So what I did here is I just added an icosphere, and then to be able to see the roughness very well, I added a noise texture, and then I put that noise texture through a color ramp to kind of change the colors, and then I put that into the roughness value of the principal BSDF, so you can see some parts are very rough, and then other parts are very shiny. So before you bake out any texture, you first need to UV unwrap your object. So what I'm going to do is press the tab key to go into edit mode, and then you could do this in the UV editing tab if you want to, or you could also just split the window, and I have changed this to the UV editor. So for an object like this, I'm just going to press U to unwrap, and then I'm going to do the smart UV project, and then just to make a little bit of space between the islands on the island margin here, I'm just going to turn this to like a 0 0.001, click on OK. So now you you can see right here in the UV editor we have a basic UV unwrap and there's a little bit of space between the islands. And why it's so important to UV unwrap your object is because you need to tell the texture how it's going to be placed on the new image that you're baking to. So just make sure you UV unwrap your object before you continue. Alright so now you need to add a material which you probably already have and then make sure you go over here to the shader editor. So I now need to add an image to bake to so let's create a new image. So I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to go to the search right here and I'm going to search for an image texture and let's drop the image texture right here. Now I'm going to create a new image texture so I'm going to click on new here and then I want this to be a 4k texture so I'm going to click and then drag down and then let go and then for a 4k texture I'm just going to type in 4096 and then hit enter. So I'll have the width and height both set to 4096 by 4096 that is standard for a 4k texture and then on the name here I can just call this sphere roughness and then I I will just leave the color set to black. Um, that doesn't really matter because we are going to be baking over it and then I can just click on OK. So we now have this image that we've created and right up here in the UV editor if you click right here you can just add the sphere roughness to preview it so then you can see what it looks like when it's finished baking right up here. So now we can set up the bake settings. Now when you're baking you need to use the cycles render engine. So if you're using Eevee that's totally fine but when you're baking you just need to switch it over to the cycles render engine because Eevee doesn't support baking. But then once you're done with the baking process, if you want to switch it back to Eevee, you can totally do that. But just make sure when you're baking, you're using cycles. Now the render samples actually determines kind of how long it's going to take to bake. So if you turn your samples up higher, it's going to take longer to bake. Now I found that when you're baking, you really don't need that many samples. So on the samples right here on the render samples, I'm just going to turn this to like a 10. And that way it'll bake pretty fast. And I found that it doesn't really affect the quality of the bake. All right, so I need to go right down here now and open up the bake settings. So now we need to change the bake type to whatever we want to bake to. So I'm going to click on the combined and I want to bake a roughness map so I can just click right here and then change this to roughness. Now there is one more really important thing that you need to do before you hit the bake button and this is actually the reason that I'm creating this video. Right here on the sphere roughness map you can see that the color space is set to sRGB and that is the default when you add an image it's just on default set to sRGB. But when you're using any type of image texture that isn't directly contributing to the final base color, then this color space needs to be set to a non-color. So when you're setting up a material, maybe you've downloaded some texture maps from a texture website like Ambient CG or CG Bookcase or Polyhaven. When you download those textures, you'll get a color map, a normal map, a roughness map, and you also might get a metallic map or other maps. And so every image texture that isn't directly contributing to the base color needs to be set to non-color data so it works properly. Now, if you just have this set to sRGB and then bake this, you're actually going to get a slightly different 
roughness map. So just to show you, I'm going to set this to sRGB, and this actually isn't correct. I'm supposed to set this to non-color before I bake it, but I'm just going to set this to sRGB. So then I just need to make sure the object is selected, and then make sure the sphere roughness is selected. And I also like to just press Control S to save my Blender file before I hit the bake button, and then I will click on bake. All right, so it finished, and you can see this is what it looks like. And so what I need to do now is save this image. So I'm going to click right up here on image and then I can click on save as and I'm going to save this image texture as sphere roughness sRGB and then I will just click on save as all right so we've now saved this as an external file on our computer so what I can do now is I can just unplug these procedural nodes so I can just unplug these and I can just kind of bring them to the side and I'm now going to take the sphere roughness and I'm going to take the color and put that into the roughness right here and you can see that it looks exactly the same even though this is an image texture now it looks pretty much the same the problem with this though is is that this color space is set to sRGB and it's actually supposed to be set to non-color data. So if I click on the sRGB and then change it to non-color data, you can see now it actually looks different. You can see it looks much more rough and that just doesn't look correct. But it is the standard in 3D software to have the color space set to non-color data if it isn't contributing to the base color. And so changing the roughness map to sRGB isn't really correct even though it does look better. So what I'm going to do is do the exact same thing now but just bake it out with non-color. So I'm going to unplug the roughness and then I'm going to take the color ramp and I'm going to put that back into the roughness. So we now have the procedural nodes again that I'm going to bake. So now what I'll do is just exit out of this image texture and I can just click on new to make a new image texture. And again, it's just going to be a 4k texture and I can just leave it blank because I will name it later when I save the image and I'm just going to click on okay. So we now have a new image texture. And if I click right here, here is the new image texture, the untitled. Now, remember, I'm going to set this to non-color data before I actually bake it. So now again, make sure the object is selected and then make sure that your image texture is selected. And then it's set to the roughness right here on the bake settings. And I'm going to click on bake again and it's finished baking. But now what I need to do is save this image so that when we close Blender, it won't lose the data. So I'm going to save this image. So let's click on image and then I can click on save as. So here's the other roughness map that we baked, but I'm going to rename this one sphere roughness non-color and then I will click on save as image. All right, so we can now just plug this up. So I'm going to take the roughness and unplug this and then I'm just going to bring these down here and then really important, make sure that the color space is set to non-color because that's what you need to set it for for a roughness texture. So I can now just take the color and I can plug the color into the roughness and there we go. Now it looks correct with the non-color color space and you can see if I click on this and change it back to the sRGB, now it actually doesn't look correct now it's actually too shiny but that is fine because we don't want this to be set to sRGB we want to set this to a non-color because that is the correct color space when you are using roughness maps so I hope you found this tutorial helpful and thank you so much for watching and if you'd like to help support me and this YouTube channel then you can check out my Gumroad store and Patreon page those are two really great places to help support the channel and you can also check out the YouTube memberships so if you click down on that join button next to the subscribe button if you join my membership you'll be helping to support the channel monthly and you'll get some cool perks here on YouTube. But I hope this tutorial was helpful and thank you for watching.